Hi everybody, welcome to Let's Talk About Jesus with Fever Adibowale. It's been such a while. Um, yeah, I'm glad that you're here today. If this is your first time, welcome. And if you're a returning subscriber, welcome. I'm glad that you're here. On this channel, I talk about Jesus. Yeah? And I hope that um, content from this channel will bless you, will change your life, it will transform you, it will help you look more like Jesus. That's the goal, right? To look more like Jesus. Before we continue, let us just say a word of prayer. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you today. Please teach us your word. Teach us, change us, transform us, and let us look like you. In Jesus' name, speak through me, Holy Spirit. Thank you, because I know you've heard. In Jesus' name, I pray. I've prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, last week, we started with the subject of the spirit of truth, and I did like a brief introduction. Today, I would like to finish up. I know I had said six series, but I just... Um, thought that there probably is no need to make it so such a long um, thing, especially because the Holy Spirit had said to talk about something else after this too. So, um, let's just go quickly into the word. So we are um, looking at John chapter 14 verse 15 to 16. That's the main um, scripture that we're looking at. Um, and it said that, um, and it says John 14 verse 16, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthen and stand by to be with you forever. I just read from the Amplified Version. Now, John 16, verse 13 um, to 15 says, But when the Spirit of Truth comes, um, I would like to read the message translation. It says, I still have many things to tell you, but you cannot handle them. But when the friend comes, the Spirit of Truth, he will take you by the hand and guide you into all truth. There is. He won't draw attention to himself, but he will make sense of what is about to happen. And indeed, out of all that I have done, he, out of all, the, all that I have done and said, he will honor me. He will take from mine and deliver it to you. Everything the Father has is also mine. That is why I have said he will take from me and deliver it to you. Hallelujah. So the spirit of truth, like I gave an introduction last week, is um, is our friend, right? He's the one that um, Jesus give to us he's jesus unlimited like someone smarter than me said so um the amplified version so tells us about his role because we're looking at his function his role his purpose why is he here why is he in our lives i would ask the father he would give you another helper right you know paraclex that's the greek word it comes from the word parakletos and he comforts so the holy ghost is our comforter he is here to comfort you the Bible talks about God being the source of all comfort so that after we have been comforted, we can comfort other people. So he comforts us and lets us, he lets us go through things first of all, right? And then he comforts you in that season. Now he's not the one doing the, the evil that has happened to you, you know, your child died, um, something happened to you as a child, you know, things happened. Yes, he, had, he allowed them, but he did not cause it to happen so don't go blaming god saying god this happened to me and you are allowed this there are other things beyond their laws their systems their things that sometimes it's not god might not just intervene sometimes but he mess by his mercy of course he will intervene um but who he sometimes he allows it because through that um, season when he comforts you you are able to also be a blessing to other people right so he's our comforter he's our helper he helps you through life right um, he's not just going to leave you. Imagine if you had a child and you were sending that child to war. You will not just leave your child to go that go to war without any help, right? No ammunition, nothing. So God gave us the Holy Ghost because we're in, we're in a war, right? Living on this earth is a war. The enemy is constantly trying to get us to disobey God. The enemy is trying. You know when you're under attack, it's not. I know my Nigerian people will say, "Oh, it's when we're when they are attacking our destiny, right?" But it's not only about attacking of destiny <laughs> when you are not able to obey god when you're not able to live a life worthy of the lord you're under attack hallelujah and then when you're under attack you know the point the whole point of what the enemy is trying to do is to try to get us to disobey god so that at some point we will turn away from the lord right so you get people to go to hell right so it's important that you hold on to the holy ghost because he's your helper bible say, the bible also says he's our advocate advocate means someone who speaks about you publicly right so it's not just um about oh somebody's in the court of law and is advocating for you in that sense of the word no it's also when somebody for example they are having a meeting about you somebody speaks up for you 
the person is advocating for you hallelujah so the holy ghost advocates for us and sometimes maybe in a business meeting they are trying to um you know finalize on a contract and you're not there god can raise somebody to speak for you jesus also is advocating for us in heaven right when the enemy comes with accusations because the satan is the accuser of the brethren he accuses us you did this you did this you did this you did this we did that right and jesus is saying father look at my blood look at my blood so the holy ghost advocates for us he also intercedes for us this is why it's important to speak in other tongues i know sometimes the enemy can come against you saying you are saying rubbish we have had that before right you are saying rubbish what are you saying you don't even know what you are saying you're just wasting your time no but the bible says that he who prays speaks mysteries to god so speak in other tongues don't be shy right the people of the world are not afraid to do stupid things in public so why should you be afraid um, or ashamed to pray in other tongues i'm not just saying you pray in public in your quiet space in your secret place pray in other tongues you are praying the will of god for your life there are things in the future that are coming that you have you know have no idea but when you begin to pray in other tongues you are smoothening those those crooked parts hallelujah so it's important that you let the holy ghost pray through you bible says that he he groans through us because we do not know how he said we don't know how to pray as we ought to but the holy ghost prays through us so let him intercede and it's not just many times not just for you maybe your children your city right because god is a god of kingdoms and systems you're praying for the brethren brothers and sisters who are in prison currently for their faith so let the holy ghost use you when we say god use me it's not just stand in front of the pulpit with a microphone no we want god to use us anyhow any way he wants right we are his we belong to him we are his people so when you allow god to use you in, in intercession he's also counselor he's the one that advises us right he gives us advice i think i think i've said this before i wrote a post on facebook about it how when i was in university there was a time where i was really broke i had to just asked my friends for money the week before and i didn't want to bother them and i was upset that i didn't have money and i was like Oh God, how can I not be having money? I'm so broke, blah, blah, blah. And I was complaining. I said, in fact, I'm just going to look for a sugar daddy because I'm a fine girl. Don't mind that I've had a little bit of weight there now. Then I used to be very, very sleep. <laughs> um, yeah, and I I was contemplating how I was going to have a sugar daddy and, you know, and try to get some money or hustle. It, it, for me, the end was just finding means. And while I was thinking about that, a thought just came to me. You know, when thoughts like that come to us, we say, oh, and something told me but it was not something it was the holy ghost and he said okay so now when you go and and uh, start sleeping with somebody to get money first of all you become a prostitute right then you get pregnant or you get std <laughs> you get an std right you get sick um who will be to blame for it you know so the holy spirit just i saw the end of what i was planning to do the consequences and i just said yeah this is just a stupid idea and that was the end of that so the holy ghost counseled me right and and that maybe that's just an extreme but sometimes he counsels us right bible says we hear a voice saying this is the way walk here in it walk in it so the holy spirit is here to tell us the path that god has designed for us when we come to this earth there are books that are written you know in the book of psalms um the bible says that i've come to do your will as it is written in the volume of the books so you have a book and there's a way you're supposed to live according to that book so the holy ghost is one that will teach us do this buy this house don't buy this house live in this area don't live in this area move from this city right like lot was told to move from the city because the judgment was coming on that city so the holy ghost is our teacher he's our counselor learn to listen to him as long as the word is saying what he's saying right he will not contradict the word so when you say the word god spoke to me check it what does the word say hallelujah good so he's also a strengthener the bible talks about being strengthened in the book of ephesians chapter one it says, being strengthened with might by his spirit in our inner man. Ephesians chapter 6 says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So God wants us to be strong. God does not want us to be weak. There's a victim mentality going on nowadays. This one did this to me. I am like this because this one did this. I was abused as a child. And this one beat me. You know, there's a lot of, I'm not saying, I'm not invalid invalidating those experiences. Yes, those things must have, might have happened. You might have been victimized. But you stand up from there and say, no, that's not who I am. I'm not a victim. I am a victim, right? Because Jesus is not there so that you'll be a victim. No, Jesus wants you to get up and do things with your life. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit is the strengthener. Go to him and say, Father God, me, I'm weak. In fact, he's strengthening us against sin, right? Because sometimes the flesh wants to do some things. I know, I don't know about you guys, but me, I have been there where... Anyway, seriously tempting me 
right? And the flesh wants to do those temptations, but the Holy Spirit strengthens us and says, No, I will not disobey God, I will obey God, I will not disobey God, I will obey God. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is our strengthener. Ask Him to strengthen you today, right? I heard something um, Kenny Hagen Jr. said. Is in if you listen to his program, they always start with, I do not quit, I cannot be defeated. And I say that to myself often, I do not quit, I cannot be defeated because this life. There are many things that are trying to defeat us, trying to make us quit. But no, we are not victims. So would you say that with me now? I do not quit. I cannot be defeated. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is also our standby. You know, He stays with us. Whatever else we need Him to do, He's there. Right? I'm reminded of when I was growing up. My mom, the Holy Spirit used, taught her or used her to, taught her how to raise us. I remember as a child, I would be doing something bad or even about to happen. My mother would be dreaming. <laughs> and I should have been fever. I dreamt that this this has happened. So even if I'm in that situation, I know, ah, mommy has dreamt though. I this thing was not be the way she has dreamt, right? And that's the Holy Spirit giving her dreams, showing her the future and helping her guide us. So and he says to be with you forever. So the Holy Ghost is with us forever. Hallelujah. If you sin, don't run away from him. Right? Come back. Because if you if you run away, Satan's goal is being achieved. He wants you as as far from God as possible. So when you sin, don't run away from the Lord. Come back, apologize, and he he's not going anywhere. He's with us forever. I know you say, oh, but in in the book of Psalms, David said, um, to take not your Holy Ghost away from me. But now this is Jesus telling us in in John that he, the Holy Ghost, He has sent the Holy Spirit to be with us forever. The Holy Spirit might might be quiet if we don't engage Him. So you need to engage Him. Talk to Him. He's always, he's always there, hallelujah, and he's with us forever. Sin does not push him away, right? It pushes you away from him. So you come back and say, Father God, I'm sorry, please, I'm back here. Hmm? Hallelujah. I hope this um, video has blessed you. If it has, I encourage you to like, to share, and to subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for joining me. Bye-bye.